Good morning, y'all. Welcome to my office. So, I've been thinking. A lot of people are starting to get into planning going into 2018. And something that I see a lot of is, what do I need to get? What should I invest in? How much do y'all spend on an average? So, I wanted to go through some things that I've invested in that actually have paid off and are extremely useful and some things that I probably wouldn't recommend to somebody getting started. So, of course, you gotta invest in a good planner. Find a planner that you love. I like rings because I can add pages to it easily. I can print my own inserts or I can purchase inserts that will work for the planner. And then a good binder. So there's lots of choices in binders. Um, there are several companies out there I used to be a one binder person. I did not have multiple binders and my life was perfectly fine. Now I'm a crazy person who has jumped down a rabbit hole and am waiting on another binder to come in because I just absolutely must have it. It is not a necessity. It is fun. The other thing is the disc planners. I like my disc planners. Hardbounds are a little bit harder to go with and the traveler's notebooks are always a lot of fun. Oh, where did my TNs go? Oh, my TN stack is down here and got some TNs over here and y'all are just going to get whiplash. Um, and then the bullet journals. So I love my bullet journals because I'm a list person and I like to make my lists. And there's several different bullet journals out there. You don't have to invest in a really expensive one. If you're just getting started, you can find a dot grid journal for, you know, five, six bucks somewhere. So what do you need? to make your life a little bit easier. So, some of the things that I feel like are necessary, my absolute favorite thing in the world, is my laminator. I love my laminator. I can use it to make bookmarks. I can use it to make my divider tabs. Um, I can use it to protect pictures and make dashboards. And I actually use it in my day-to-day -day life for things outside of planning. So, for 20 bucks, picked up a great little laminator at Walmart, and it is well worth the investment. Laminating pads. I pick mine up at Walmart, the pouches. So, I tend to get a full sheet, a 5x7, and a 4x6, and it pretty much covers everything I absolutely must have. For me, washi is a good investment. I don't do a lot of sticker kits. I tend to be a little bit more of a functional planner. So we're gonna get whiplash as we come over to my washi stash. I do use a lot of washi. Um, I can use it to box off my pages. I can use it to add a little bit of decorative flair to it. It's a little cumbersome to store so I use these little storage bins to kind of group them together. Um, Planner Society ones versus Dollar Target Spot. At one point I had them done by color. Um, I use a little tin that I can throw some in and throw them in a bag to take with me. The little recollection kits, they're a really easy, quick, inexpensive way to get started with your washi. So washi tape for me is definitely, yes, get your washi tape. Kits, oh, kits, 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 kits. The pros on the kits, you don't have to think about what it is that you're going to use. <coughs> what is your color scheme gonna be? What is your theme gonna be? You don't have to worry about that. So kits, I do recommend. 1407. So they still come boxed. There's also some little small to go kits that you can get. But the advantage of 1407 is you have an opportunity to see what the kit is before you purchase it. So it's almost, it's not a pre sale. You purchase it a few days later, Natasha throws it in the mail for you. She probably doesn't throw it. She gingerly wraps it, takes it to the post office, and drops it off for you. So you know what you're gonna get. Your Planner Society kits. I'm gonna be really honest. I usually only like one or two things in the box and then they get stuck on the shelf. 
every now and then I'll be like, oh, I have that. When I see it in somebody's Instagram or something like that, and I may pull it out and play with it and use it a little bit. It's expensive. It's 40 bucks a month with my washi. It actually probably runs a little bit more than that. Um, and I don't know what I'm gonna get. And to be really honest, the last two months, I haven't had a chance to really get into Instagram. I haven't been in the Facebook group. So when I open the box, it's a complete and total surprise for me. So I got a travels notebook and the December one that I just was not expecting. So the downfall is you never know what you're gonna get. Sometimes you love it, sometimes you don't. You can always put it in a buy, sell, trade group and somebody will be more than happy to purchase it from you. Hole punches, gotta have some punches. This one I love. This one by Mambi would not recommend. The Recollections, these would recommend them in a heartbeat. They work amazing at punching my pages for my ringed binders. Um, hole punch. Got to have a good punch. You can use a handheld punch, but your hand gets tired and it hurts. So for me, buying these at 50% off or 60% off, absolutely well worth it. Um, some of the other things. Pins. Oh my God. You get into the planner community and you go down this rabbit hole of Tombos and all these crazy crazy pens and your pen gems and your pencils and you know what I say buy them on sale but if you have a favorite pen buy a couple of them to keep with you the rest of them yeah sometimes I use them sometimes I don't look I even have pens up there I got pens on my washi tower I got a pouch of pens in my bag Pens. I tend to have more pens than anybody needs. Pens. Get you some good pens. Pens are also an inexpensive way to decorate your planners. You don't have to be able to draw. You can doodle. You can have fun with it. There's lots of inspiration out there. And there are lots of really, really great things that you can do with it. So, pens. Good investment cardstock love my cardstock i tend to pick my pads up for less than five dollars when they're on sale at joann's michael's hobby lobby always buy them on sale i like that i can control what the paper is that i'm getting and i tend to try to buy pads that play well together in the same sandbox so if i want something from this pad it'll go well with something from this pad or this pad or this pad and I try to do classic things, not trendy things. Trends come and go, but I know what I like and I'm probably always gonna like what I like. So that I try to do. If you're printing your own inserts, I do recommend investing in some good paper. So in my top bin, I just have regular old, no, regular old printer paper, the cheap stuff, $3.99 at Office Depot. And that's what I do my test prints on. What I use in my traveler's notebooks and I use in my ringed binders is 32 pound. <coughs> I look for it on sale and when it's on sale, I'm gonna stock up a little bit. Then I have two containers that have cardstock, a 40 and a 60 pound, and then I have a small stack of 100 pound. And I'm gonna use those more for my die cuts, making my folders those types of things. They work really, really, really well for that stuff. So investing in good paper, always a plus side. What else do we have in here? Oh, my Cricut machine. So I invested in a machine. There are tons and tons of free stickers that you can print. And I can't cut a straight line to save my life. And a gyro cut just does not get along with me. So, I invested in the Cricut machine. I waited till they went on sale, purchased it. I love the fact that when I first got it, I really didn't use my laptop. I used more of my iPad. I did upload the images on my laptop, but now you can upload images directly from your iPad or from your phone. So, that makes it really nice. Now, the silhouette tends to do more than the Cricut. And that's getting into a whole nother controversy. Which one to buy, which one not to buy. 
I do recommend getting a die cut machine. They're fun. I use them for a lot of other things now. I use it for Christmas gifts and tags and not just printing planner related stuff. So that was a pleasant upside to it. Um, so that's an inexpensive way to, in the long run, you're saving money, but yes, it's gonna be an upfront investment. So highly, highly recommend that one. Storage containers are always a plus. So pick them up at the dollar store. These little clear shoe boxes make wonderful storage. Absolutely need to have a cutter. So some type of nice cutting device. I have three that I use. My recollections is my workhorse. That sucker will cut through anything. And I paid like seven bucks for it. Absolutely love it. Change the blade about once a year. The Fisk, I like because I can measure things, line things up a little bit easier on it than I can with the recollections. And then this little bitty baby one tends to go with me to cut out little small simple things and more notebook paper. Don't go down the foxy hole. Just don't do it. I love the binders. I'm addicted to the binders. I got one on order right now. It is not a necessity, but dang, they're so doggone pretty. I love, love, love my foxy binders. Um, I don't even consider that a planner related thing. That's just a foxy addiction. It's kind of like my coffee. I just, I gotta do it. I gotta have it. Um, there's some buy sell trade groups out there that, you know, you really aren't saving a whole ton of money, but you get them really quick. So I do recommend just buying them directly from the company. That way you get exactly what you want and you're not disappointed when they come in. So we got paper, we got punches for my tea ends. I use a long arm stapler because I like mine bound. Some people don't. You can also sew them. And I also use a lot of, what else do I use a lot of? Oh, my printer. So, very inexpensive printer. Um, bought it on sale for around $100. Did sign up for the HP Ink program, which in the long run has actually saved me a lot of money because I was blowing through ink left and right. And now it's actually become much more manageable. So I like the HP Ink program. I like my little inexpensive HP printer. You know, I'm not selling stickers. I'm not selling inserts. I'm printing off stuff from my husband, stuff from my house, and stuff from my planner. And the quality of the printer is not bad. So all of my inserts, I tend to print myself. And they work really, really well. My camera just doesn't know how to focus today. Um, so that always helps being able to kind of print your own stuff. The other thing I like are digital downloads. Digital downloads are fairly inexpensive. You can buy an entire pack of digital paper for next to nothing and incorporate them into your planner. So I think this entire set ran me like $5 and you can see it all throughout my planner. Um, the dividers, it's holiday in the mall. I ordered my dividers from Shelby Lico. Great quality, inexpensive prices. And the clips. These you can pretty much make yourself, but if you have the ability, it's just so much less frustrating to purchase them on Etsy. Um, other things I make myself. You know, the decorative side of planning for me is my therapy and my relaxation where the functional side of planning is my organization and it keeps me focused and it keeps me task oriented. So my best advice is don't invest a whole lot going in up front. DIY a lot of stuff. It makes it fun. That's the fun side of planning. Um, hit your local planner meetups. If you have a group that meets up in your area, Go make some planner friends because planner friends absolutely make your best friends. And I've learned a lot from the women that I associate with in the planner community. And it's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a great group of women. Um, some of the groups can be a little overwhelming. But I, I'll tell you what, if you stick it out, they're amazing women to get to know. 
Um, if you have any questions about some of the things that I use or I recommend, please let me know. As we go into 2018, I just want to wish everybody an extremely happy new year. Um, I'm excited to see some of the things that y'all have come up with. I've really enjoyed getting tagged and seeing some of the projects that you've used and the way that my videos have inspired you. And my New Year's resolution, now that the holidays are over, is going into 2018 to have more videos up and posted on a regular basis. So, once I get this one up, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to finish up uh, setting this sucker up for 2018. And we'll do a quick flip through and let you see the thought process behind why I chose the inserts that I chose, how I decorated them, and where I got some of the decorations from. So, until then, Happy New Year's. Happy planning, everyone.